Hello, hello. Welcome to the Story Darlings podcast. I'm Sandra. And I'm Tara. What do we have going on today, Tara? So today we are going to talk about a movie that I absolutely love and I made Sandra watch um, called Me Before You. And I'm going to call myself out before Sandra does because I noticed (laughs) today that the last two things that I have recommended have not been feel-good moments for us. Um, This movie and then last episode was about American family or American murder, the family next door. And both of those are kind of downers. Um, So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to call myself out on that one, but this one is based off of a book series called Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. And we'll discuss all of them. Yeah, I haven't even bothered putting on makeup the last few times we've recorded (laughs) just because you've been picking like all of these things that make me cry. So I'm just like, why, why bother? So soul sapping, soul sapping. Accuse me of being the downer. (laughs) I know, I know. I I was actually thinking about that this morning and I was like, hmm. I can't, I can't give her crap anymore because no. I, I love these, I guess, soul sapping, take you on a journey of like other people's lives and the, the crap that they put up with. I don't know. It makes me feel better about my life, maybe. Yeah, I can see that. It does make me feel better about my life in certain regards, other regards, not so much. I also see myself in some of them and I'm like, mm, I can, I can see me doing the exact same thing that they are. I mean, not the murder one. I, I can't see myself murdering anybody. Like no, it is, but could. Chris. <laughs> yeah. Um, little, little psychotic people. Yeah. So if you haven't watched that episode, go back and watch it. it it's very interesting to see that side of people. Yeah. And then go hug someone after. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to need somebody there. So, Sandra, what have you been up to besides hating your life because I'm <laughs> making you watch this? I mean, what does it look like I've been up to? It's it's a Sunday, so I'm pretty much doing my laundry, Vincent's laundry. I'm trying to catch up on stuff. I've been trying to catch up on reading, really. So I'm still only like a third of the way through Armand Trout's new book, A Shadow in the Ember, the spinoff series. And then catching up on my Infinite Jess reading, which... I'm like two thirds of the way through this book now. One more month of like reading it and I'll be done. So that's exciting. Yeah, that's that's about it. Super exciting life over <laughs> here. <laughs> well, I have been converted by Sandra um, and I started watching or not watching reading the From Blood and Ash series or book series by Jennifer Armentrout as well. So maybe at some point I'll catch up with you on yeah. the new one. You'll probably like finish this book before I do. <laughs> well, I do devote my mornings when I wake up and I'm like, I don't, I don't feel like dealing with my kids yet. I do devote that to reading. So yeah. Well, Jessie, shout out to Jessie. If she's listening, she will be a guest for a future episode when we decide to talk about the Blood and Ash books. So she's super excited. And I think it'll be a fun one to talk about. Can't wait to get your takes on it. But anywho, let's go through Sweet and Sours. You want to go first or you want me to? <laughs> Maybe I should go first. I have kind of a big downer. <clears throat> so Sour first. My dad's dog Rags died like a couple days ago and the dog was like 16 years old like I gave him to my dad back in like 2000 what year would that be five yeah 2005 like still was attending Westminster but like the dog was like deaf already and he was losing his sight but like I just puppy sat him this past May and he seemed okay But it was just like, I guess he was in a lot of pain and just like not sleeping well and just sick, being sick everywhere. And just he deteriorated very quickly. So my dad had to put him down. And so that was sad. Like my dad never cries at all. And my dad sends photos as live, the live motion photos, Mm -hmm. just unknowingly. (laughs) And like my dad was like very much crying 
in it as he held oh. rags before he went. So that was just really sad. So, so of course I was like crying and going through old photos of the dog, the damn dog. So they they have such short lives. It just hurts. But yeah, so that's my that's my sour. Um sweet. I uh gave myself a mask today. Like I did a little self-care time just because it's been a while and so I've just been kind of lazing about and doing little things around the house so that's that's about it for me <laughs> you go pick this back up <laughs> okay so my sweet is my son is really feeling his personality right now and he just comes up with the most funny things and he acts just like me and so I really really enjoy his snark back at me which as a parent you probably shouldn't but like I can't help but laugh when he's like snarky <laughs> back to me and so um the other day he was being whiny about something and I I told him you're being whiny and he's like well that's just my personality so and I'm like mm, okay I guess. And then this morning we were, we went for a hike before a birthday party and um, it's a birthday party of his quote, I'm using air quotes here, his girlfriend that he's, he's been dating since he was three. Um, so five years, this is a long-term a long relationship, relationship here. Yeah. Um, and so it was her birthday party. And so he's like, well, I want to walk more. And I was like, well, we can't, we've got to be there. Like, you know, get your butt in gear kind of a thing. And he was like, yeah, I can't miss my girlfriend's birthday party. I was like, yeah, you'll be in trouble. And he was like, well, I would turn it around with my charming smile. And I'm just oh, like, no. oh, goodness. No. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I shouldn't laugh at that. I should not. But I mean, that was pretty clever. So. I can't not. So yeah, I'm I'm you just gotta enjoying nip that in the him. bud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just enjoying his little comebacks to everything. Yeah. Um it's it's adorable. I'm very witty for an eight year old. I know, I know. I'm like, you're gonna you're gonna grow into that and be like just super snarky witty. So it's gonna be like Lucifer, maybe a little hopefully a little lower key, but <laughs> That would just make you so happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I really don't have a sour that I could come up with. So excuse me oh. while I roll my eyes. Rainbows over <laughs> here. <laughs> I've, I've been rolling my eyes a lot at Sandra on Twitter. So I'll give Hashtag you Hashtag scared right and here. horny. That says it all. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of eye rolls. And I think I'm going to put a poll on our Twitter of whether or not we should do the Angel series. And make Sandra watch all five <laughs> seasons of it. I think I would win this. So I might actually put that on there. I'm going to hurry up and change the login <laughs> password. <laughs> Tara's <laughs> never going to be able to get into Twitter again. Uh, yeah, you should do a poll. I mean, <clears throat> I would I would watch them. It might take me a while. I don't know how many episodes are in every single season of Angel, but I think that I think it was on around that time where there were like 20 episodes. In oh my god. <laughs> so it, <laughs> it may take you a while, but I feel like you would like it. It's got like that, you know, back at that time frame, there were a lot of those like Dark Angel kind charmed. of feel charmed. And so I think you would like it. Yeah. I just, I don't know why I missed that boat. I was like, I feel like I watched everything else, like Roswell, Charmed. Oh, I forgot about Roswell. Ooh, I oh, loved Roswell. Yeah. Roswell, yeah. And Buffy, should... I loved Buffy too. I think I've, I've seen some, but I never watched the whole thing. So I don't know what it was about Angel and Buffy. I think you should watch them now. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. You said them, plural. Let's start with one. <laughs> I, I started watching Buffy again though, and I'm like, oh. This, this didn't hit me the same in adulthood as it did when I was a teenager. Okay, whatever. Do a poll and we can invite Benjamin if if the people on the poll says yes. So everybody say yes. <laughs> Please, as a favor to me, say yes. All right. Well, 
So we're going to talk about something sad again with heavy mm -hmm. themes. You've read the books, right? Yeah, yes. you did read the books. So I have like no idea where the story's going. I tried like, oh, by the way, quick call out. So Tara wrote a blog post on the series. It's up on storydarlings.com. So if you want to check out her review of it, definitely go do that. I tried like skimming it just so that I wouldn't spoil myself Ouch. completely. <laughs> wouldn't even so, read the whole blog. Mm, yeah. So I did spoil myself on like a major little thing in, but I did watch the movie today for you so yeah and you enjoyed the movie right i mean i did the, but like, it was so damn sad, sad i'm part. like i'm tired of feeling sad we need to do some happy ones get david back on something <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about inviting david back like i got enough crap last time what other hashtags will he come up with <laughs> <laughs> hopefully one about sandra this time and not tara <laughs> no maybe gloom i don't know <laughs> he sad and crap. <laughs> he, he gave me crap on the on the kissing booth episode <laughs> about that so whatever definitely check out the blog post tara recaps each of the three books and gives like her personal take on the series overall but give us a synopsis for those who have not seen me before you yeah so me before you follows louisa um who when you start out the movie, she is kind of down on her luck. She is getting fired from a job because they just can't afford her anymore. Um, and then you also see her with her family who are relying on that income to make ends meet because her dad is without a job right now. And so she goes and she's trying to find a new job and she gets called for an interview for a caretaker. Um, and so she goes to this interview and there are some really cute scenes of her and like just she's a little quirky, a little like she just draws you in a um, little happy go lucky, too. And so she's meeting this person that she is supposed to be caretaking for. And his name is Will. And Will was involved in a tragic accident that left him a paraplegic. And so the movie kind of just follows them and they end up falling in love, which is super sweet. And then there's a sad part, and I'm going to spoil it for everybody, so I'm sorry. But Will, due to his being a paraplegic, chooses to end his life. And Louisa thought that she could convince him not to, but she could not. And so she is there with him when he ends his life. And that is book one, ladies and gentlemen. Does this <laughs> get more upbeat? It does. It does. It <laughs> It does, kind of. <laughs> um, so the second book follows Louisa after Will's death. And um, she is trying to cope with the fact that he ended his life. Um, but also live her life how she thinks he would want to. Because he was always the person that lived his life to the fullest. He was the daredevil. He wanted to be involved in everything um, that he possibly could be. And he came from money. So he had the money to do that as well. So he left Louisa some money so that she could live life to the fullest without having to worry about that. And so book two picks up with Louisa um, kind of living her life, um, which falls apart for her. And she ends up really thinking that, you know, she's not doing a service to Will and, and a drunken night ends up falling off the roof of her building and being hospitalized. I said that right, right? Hospitalized. Did you say that, that with sounded a really British weird. accent? <laughs> <laughs> I think I did. And I'm like, wait, that sounds really weird coming out of my mouth. Hospitalized. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, and so she gets paramedics called because she falls off this roof. She had been drinking a little too much, falls off the roof, breaks some bones, has to stay in the hospital for a little while. But in doing so, she meets a guy named Sam Fielding and he becomes her love interest for the next two books and she ends up getting her a happy end with him so yay for happy endings thank god somebody has a happy ending <laughs> I know I'm like you had to work for it in this book too but yeah like really work for it because it doesn't happen until like two chapters from the end of the third book that they like actually 
end up together. But anyway, so she ends up falling in love with him. And then in the third book, you're following her across the pond to the United States, where she is going to be a caregiver for a very wealthy woman and kind of just following her through living life to the fullest over in the United States and kind of juggling the relationship with Sam at the same time. Wait, Sam But it ends happy. In- Okay. Yes. I was like, wait, he he's in the UK? I thought she yep. was like really interested in fashion and wanted to go she to school She likes fashion for, for the, herself. For herself. Okay. Yeah. So she didn't she didn't pursue that. Okay. But she she does like it. She just didn't pursue that. So you just she just kept the caregiver route, huh? Mm-hmm. I mean it in defense of that job for her, she was very good at it. She just had that personality. Mm-hmm. I love the beginning of the movie too, and it was showing her just interacting with different people, like, oh, it's less calories if you eat it standing up. And <laughs> yeah. she's just so adorable. But like yes. she had been doing that job for six years. It's not like she had mm-hmm. ambitious goals of any kind, you know, for her life. She just really enjoyed making people happy and and letting other people you know, splurge on themselves. And then I I felt for her because she did carry so much burden with her family. And and you Mm -hmm. see her like living in this cramped little house with so many people. I would lose my damn mind in this house. There's like absolutely no privacy. And then you see her just like, it's like Elizabeth, Elizabeth Bennett coming to Pemberley. And she's just like, walking the estate like looking around in (laughs) awe and that's what that scene reminded me of when she first went to the castle to meet will and about that meeting with will when he He was a little jackass when he starts making that god-awful noise because he yeah like he's a quadriplegic like all four limbs right Mm -hmm. Yeah, he can like barely move Mm -hmm. his thumb. And so he starts making that noise. At first, I like couldn't tell if he was just fucking with her or what. And then so I started like tearing up. And then when you realize how miserable he is, I just started like crying just because you could tell that he was just so done with being that way and just how he was just being so ugly to himself, like his situation. And it just made me cry. So I was like, oh, great. This movie is going to. Ooh, it's gonna this is gonna go very well for me <laughs> yeah no he he starts out trying to scare her away because she is his parents kind of way of tricking him into not wanting to end his life so he gave his parents six months to change his mind before he ends his life and them hiring her as his caretaker and having her take him around and and do things with him and show him that he could still have a life was their way of trying to to make him okay with life and not want to end it um and so he knew that so he was trying his hardest at first to scare her away so that there wasn't even that shot which she thought hard about, like, not coming back just because mm-hmm. he was just so opposite to her personality because she, like you said, is so quirky. She wears, like, these loud, crazy patterned fabrics and shoes. There's, like, a comment later about her, what is, what was it, like, her, her drag queen shoes or something like that? <laughs> yes. Oh, I can't. What was the exact wording? But, I mean, it was a cute, cozy kind of style. But, yeah, a bit eccentric. And- And she finds joy in pretty much everything she does. Oh, yeah. She's She's like a child. She's got that personality that is just so effervescent and so, you know, loving everything, even though compared to Will, she didn't have very much to love. Like he had the money, he had everything going for him. And she didn't, but she found joy in even the small things that she did have. Mm -hmm. So I I loved that about her. I loved her ability just to see the positive in everything. I don't know. I felt like she was a little bit like me and like always trying to find like a silver lining to everything. Yeah. I like how you worded that she was always looking for joy in the small things because Mm -hmm. Will and Louisa were such a good juxtaposition. Like, Mm -hmm. 
I think part of his problem, there's like a saying that it's better to have loved and lost than to have never loved before. But for him, loving was like on a grand scale in everything that he did. And it was like having a taste of that kind of grand lifestyle where he was cliff diving or wake surfing or whatever, jumping out of airplanes, like whatever he was doing he could not just be in the moment and enjoy anything about his new self at all. So it kind of worked against him. And he was always the best at everything he did. Mm -hmm. And yep. then he had his accident and he was no longer the best. Like yeah. He couldn't even feed himself. And that was one of his big things is he hated being fed because he felt like it was just kind of a... yeah. And then there's, you know, Louisa, who she's used to taking care of everybody else, putting herself last, but she finds joy in like these tiny little things like a pair of shoes or a scarf or, you know, a color of something or bird singing, like whatever it is. She just appreciates those tiny moments. And so the learning for her was, I loved how Will taught her to step out of her comfort zone mm -hmm. and to be a little more daring. Selfish. Mm -hmm. too. more selfish which brings us to her boyfriend Patrick from the beginning I I just have to say like Louisa is like a freaking Disney princess too like like you were <laughs> like when you were talking I was just picturing like a Disney princess like she loves the sound of birds and like all of these things and I'm gonna also point out that Louisa is played by Louisa Clark no, Amelia. Amelia Clark. Louisa Clark is the character. Amelia Clark is the actress who also played Khaleesi in Game of Thrones. And these two characters are so different. Like it amused me so much. I'm like, I can't picture them playing the or played by the same person. And Will is played by Sam Claflin, who was also in Hunger Games and the movie Love Rosie. Yeah, he played Finnick. Mm -hmm. okay he was also in a very I don't know if anybody else has heard of this but a movie called The Riot probably just you Tara <laughs> now I have to like look up what it's called because I The Riot Club no I kept I couldn't th think of Hunger Games so uh, that's where I recognized his face from <laughs> old <laughs> I, yeah I can't remember anymore but then Patrick her boyfriend is played by Matthew Lewis, who played Neville Longbottom in Harry Potter, but all grown and up he, now. Like, I know everybody knows that he had a glow up, but yes, like he had a glow up. But he seemed he still was like kind of goofy in this movie to me. He was just so <laughs> I found myself as I'm watching the character of Patrick on screen with Louisa. I'm just like, where did they even meet? Like, when did they decide to get into a relationship together? Like, I wanted to know all the backstory on how two vastly different people, not like Will, obviously, but like how in the world Louisa got into a relationship with this guy. So he is a very big runner. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's a tiny bit selfish too. Like he thinks the world revolves around him. And he was also the like junior entrepreneur of the year, like, or something like, and he's very proud of that. Um, and he gets very jealous of Will because Will was very successful before his accident as well. And he came for money and all of these things, but like, it's just funny to me that he was so proud of that. And then he's a runner and he just, he's very selfish. Like he doesn't take Luisa's kind of opinion no. about anything. He was, or... Yeah. He was such a stereotypical just bro. Like, come on <laughs> for their anniversary trip or whatever. He yes. plans it as like a slash a guy trip for like running like in Norway. Yeah a what? triathlon or whatever yeah. she's like I don't like to run and he made her run <laughs> and she's just like sitting here holding her she's shoes. like I don't I don't have the right <laughs> bra on for this <laughs> she hates it that would definitely be me if anybody tried to make me run like I don't I don't want to do this anymore I'm yeah. done there there was 
yeah that was totally reminded me of you but there's like another scene where patrick is running and she's just like trailing behind him cycling and he accuses her of not supporting him she's like what do you mean i don't support you i'm cycling and i hate cycling and she's just like furiously pedaling after him and still like way behind again that would be me <laughs> what do you mean i hate this yeah but i'm doing it yeah yeah i i also liked will's parents like the the actor charles dance who played tywin lannister in game of thrones too <laughs> it's like, i feel like every time i watch people from the uk i'm always like okay have they been in game of thrones or harry potter like will i recognize them these are my two options yes, will i recognize them yeah yeah pretty much no i didn't put two and two together that he was in it um but yeah no his dad like his mom seemed a little more focused on changing his mind whereas his dad seemed more okay let's let him figure out what he wants out of this um so i don't know i feel like i would be more like the mom like mm, do you really like i think you shouldn't yeah but i, I mean, kind of like that the dad was more let's let's do what we can but yeah the dad was very much of the mindset like he doesn't feel like a man you know he can't bathe mm -hmm. himself he can't go to the bathroom he can't feed himself there's like literally nothing that he can do for himself and which has always been a part of who will was and then the mom like you see her sitting at her desk and she just has these old photos of will up these like news articles and all of these you know, full page spreads and features that he's been in. There's just like so much pride. That's her baby boy, their only kid mm -hmm. and stuff. I feel like I would be hard to accept that his decision too, you know, trying to imagine mm -hmm. myself in 20 years or whatever, when Vincent is grown up, if something horrible like that were to happen, I would have a hard time just letting him make that decision, which for me i feel like i would just be like but you don't know what medical breakthroughs are going to be like there there could be something that could correct it in a few years like if you just hang in there i feel like that's what i would be saying constantly just like mm -hmm. keep hanging in there like well i think he did do that for quite a while um yeah because did, he was yeah. waiting and at that point like he was going through those treatments and what's his name the other caretaker his nurse nate. even said that like yeah nate even said that you know this this isn't gonna get him anywhere like yeah. he's not gonna regain any motion last time he did it i think that's when he regained like the little bit of his hand movement yeah i don't know i don't know what decision i would make in that I don't know how I would react if it were my kid. I don't know what kind of a decision I would make if it were me either. Like, that's just a hard, mm -hmm. a hard place to be. Because I get his point. I get him not wanting to live like that. Yeah. But I also get mm -hmm. everybody else's point around him in that he doesn't know what's going to happen. And I, I really get Louisa's like, you, we fell in love. Like, doesn't that change your mind at all? Yeah, which on that topic, obviously, I don't know how the books went, but I don't recall them saying those three words to each other like w once in the movie. Like maybe I, I missed I... it, but I didn't. No, I don't think that they did. But like they loved each other. Mm -hmm. They clearly like, they did. did. I <clears throat> I wasn't buying their romance until the wedding. His ex, God, his ex's wedding to his best friend. former best friend yeah oh my god it's like the punches keep coming for will i just felt so bad for him mm -hmm. and he didn't want to go but like he went with louisa and i just love his little like comments about let's go on something to like talk about <laughs> and yeah. He, he, yeah um and then i really loved when he took her to the concert mm-hmm yeah i i loved the scene where like he had a tag in his like his jacket and she doesn't have scissors so she goes and chews it off and every other person who's like an old stodgy person in this place like looks at her and she's like i got it <laughs> and just sits back down like nothing happened 
And then yeah, they were she was just like, giving her dirty looks. Yeah. She was like, you're lucky the tag wasn't on your pants. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, she was adorable. <laughs> she reminds me of a, a coworker that I had back at Uber. Her name, her nickname was Gobes. And I remember Gobes actually asked me, she's like, have you ever watched me before you? And I'm like, no. She's like, you need to watch a Sandra. And of course, I finally watch it 2021 because of you. But Louisa I'm and Gobes, <laughs> you are persuasive. The, I saw so much of Gobes in Louisa's personality. Just like high energy, always smiling, like always making the best situation, just very much a social butterfly with everyone. And she was she was quirky and dressed up as a bumblebee for like a TED Talk type of thing <laughs> once. <laughs> Which let's talk about the bumblebee because that is the part uh, where I'm like, I ship you guys. I ship, I stand, I do everything for you guys <laughs> at this point. And I was also kind of, you know, okay with her not being with her boyfriend anymore at that point because he was irritating me. Um, but for her birthday, her boyfriend got her a necklace that was just not her style it was his style and he liked it and so he got it for her which is great it's in the thought he got her a present that's wonderful but he was also being kind of a jackass the whole night to will who also came for her birthday and he was just being a total turd for yeah they were kind of being turds to each other too though that was what, what was fun about it like will was totally rubbing it in patrick's face with the comment about yeah, the he, he, bed bath well and he he like oversold the she has to feed me too um mm -hmm. a little bit but yeah so he was rubbing in his face but patrick was kind of rubbing it in his face that he was still able to go bike cycling and you know all of these things and he was entrepreneur of the year and I'm just like dude can it um but anyway so for her birthday Will gets her a pair of bumblebee tights and he got her these because she told him a story of when she was a child she got a pair of bumblebee tights for her birthday and absolutely loved them and wore them so much and outgrew them and it broke her heart and so will got her a pair of adult bumblebee tights and it was just the cutest thing in the world and yeah i i oh it was them her, that i wanted yeah that was i love that scene how her face lit up and she just squealed and was like literally bouncing up and down with excitement at getting these tights and it had to like go try them on immediately. I I love that scene. I also love how the movie ended with her in Paris wearing them. Wearing those. Like it just yeah. mm -hmm, it made me feel good. Is there going to be a, a next movie or is that it? I I don't think that they're making them. I thought that they were <laughs> when it first came out. There was rumors of doing the second one, but it's now been 5 years and they haven't. Mm. So, yeah, I was kind of disappointed, but it that scene just shows their two personalities like will is very caring and he pays attention yeah and louisa is so joyful about anything like even the necklace she was like very happy to get it even though it wasn't what she would have wanted especially from a guy that she's been dating for what like five years or something like dude you should know her better than that but anyway. seven seven years good freaking lord <laughs> If you are dating somebody for seven years and you do not know what they like and what they dislike, what the hell are you doing? Living just day to day in your shit. Or and only not, caring like, about second... yourself. Yeah, that too. He was just like, ugh. even uh, I hated every interaction between Patrick and Louisa. He just like made my skin crawl. He was just... He totally he oblivious just, to her he was just such a sucker like he sucked out of her what he wanted and didn't give anything back yeah even the necklace yeah like having his stupid name on it not that there's anything wrong with wearing your significant other's name around your you know if that's something neck, that you but like, like but like yeah, if you like it but it, he was just so into himself and 
Like mm-hmm. everything that he talked about her was just surface level. There wasn't anything serious, nothing of depth. It was all just like calories and fitness and I'm going just... to Norway on his little triathlon trip. And like, I he, would be he was so just so, pissed. he was just so beside himself when she was like, I don't want to go because she ended up going to a beach with Will during that time. And he I was love... just so mm. livid that she would choose to go on an actual vacation that she wanted to go on that a she's getting paid to go on over his bro trip triathlon and I'm mm. like mm, I'd probably choose the beach too yeah I like how she to ease his mind is like it's not just me and Will Nate's gonna be there too and he's just like oh so two men okay that makes it so much better he was just I don't want to say he was insecure, but he was obviously like compensating for something. With well, himself. and what, like, he had a problem with two men, but like, he, he was going to take her on this trip with like all of his friends. Yeah, seriously. Which I'm guessing are men. If they're yeah. all like cycling and they're all triathletes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just, uh, yeah. But I mean, this topic of assisted suicide it's like it's such a tough Mm -hmm. even medical issues aside with him being you know quadriplegic so like this book i'm reading infinite jess there's a character in it named kate and she is kind of in a mental house right now a recovery house because she has attempted multiple times to take her life and she doesn't have any medical issues or anything like that. She's just like severely depressed. She has done some recreational drugs in the past, which probably affected some stuff with her, but she just wants to die. She's in this recovery mm-hmm. house. She's not really getting better and she wants to die. So that's, and she's perfectly normal. She can work. She can, she looks normal, like a normal person. But it, I mean, this idea of right to die I want to be able to say that I would support someone's decision. Like if they want to die, if they truly just don't see any purpose and don't want to, it's like, why make them? I I don't know. I go back and forth. It's just really hard. I'm looking it up right now, but is that legal in the U.S.? I don't know. I, I don't know. But it's like the fact that he had to go to Switzerland... I don't know if it's something that's just not widely accepted across the world. And so he has to go to these other countries like that, that have specialized places like that, which it did seem like a very nice place. If you're going to do that to, Mm -hmm. you know, depart this world, but it was just so heartbreaking. So it looks like it's only legal in 10 places in the U S so Washington, DC, California, Colorado, Oregon, Vermont, New Mexico, Maine, New Jersey, Hawaii, and Washington are the only states that allow assisted suicide. Wow. That's that's crazy. I'm not shocked that it's not Midwest or the South. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no. The Bible Belt doesn't, doesn't allow assisted suicide. Yeah, no, I'm not shocked either, but I... I don't know. I'm torn. I'm like you. I think in some cases, like why make people suffer? It's kind of like if Mm. they're a vegetable, like we allow pulling the (sighs) plug, you know, like why do they have to be at that stage? If there's something going on, like why can't they die with dignity? Like terminal cancer patients, they're going to die. Why do they have to suffer for so long? To then die. You know what I'm saying? And rack up a shit ton of bills. I feel like a lot of the time it's the loved ones around them that refuse to let them go, you know? Like they just will well, don't want to let them. But in the US, like we don't even allow the choice, mm-hmm. except for in those 10 places. I'm just wondering why there's such a an issue with it. I if your family doesn't want to let you go, okay, that's one thing. If you don't want to do that, then that's another. But legally, why is there not an ability to choose dignity over? Yeah, I agree. Suffering. I don't know. Because in Will's mind, that's what he was doing was suffering. 
Yeah, you, we saw in the movie like how many times he was like sick. Like they said he had pneumonia four times in two years and, the, and you know, the pneumonia, last time almost killed him. Yeah. Yeah. And pneumonia for him wasn't just a like, okay, I get sick. I take some antibiotics. I'm good. For him, it stops his lungs, which yeah, it's like, like he has to have air. assistance to get working, you know? And so, yeah. I just, yeah, and just all, it's a, yeah. it's a topic that's hard to discuss, but also one that is very interesting. I think yeah, the legalities saw, of it on top of, of the like personal feelings. Yeah. You saw Luisa's mom have just this kind of knee-jerk reaction to she was like no you will not participate in in this mm -hmm. it's murder and like you know her mom i remember she was wearing like a crucifix like a cross, a cross. necklace and yeah and i feel well, like that's kind of a lot of the mentality about it mm -hmm. and you see that more in the second and third books too because the whole town shunned her and her family for being a part of it and so in the second and the third books, like nobody wants to invite them anywhere. Nobody wants to go to their parties. Nobody wants to do anything with that family because they allowed, allowed him to make that decision. That's sad. They're just like pariahs. Mm -hmm. I feel like I and, need to read the books now. <laughs> and so it's just, I don't know. It's just a very interesting topic of like, why do we think this way? Why, why can't we put ourselves in somebody else's shoes a little bit as to why they're making the decision they're making? Why just try and make them have the same beliefs that we do? I feel like part of it is like her mom's take on it, like participating in someone's murder. And then another part of it is like not even just our country, but a lot of countries that they, they just mm -hmm. take this staunch pride in like the value of life and protecting life no matter what without actually caring about what that life is what like that life looks like yeah without putting themselves in their shoes it's just mm -hmm. really sad and in will's case like i mean dealing with that for years and being in and out of the hospital and having to have some guy literally stop by however many times a day to take him to the bathroom and all this stuff it's just like good grief i yeah well and i also i don't know i i like movies and books and things like that that teach me something or put me in a position where i have to decide what i think and this one did because i was sitting there like i i feel you will like i get why you feel the way you do but i also get louisa's mom's take and louisa's take on it like i I understand why that broke Louisa because she just fell in love with this dude and he's not changing his mind. And I get her mom's side of, you know, you're taking part in something that's ending somebody's life. And, you know, he could have done things. He could have, maybe there was a medical miracle that happened, you know, two weeks down the road or whatever. Um, but you do see her family at least come around yeah and support her and her chain and her supporting of him too so that makes it a little bit easier for Louisa yeah I, like thinking back I don't know if Will really had a big character arc at all like he just kind of <laughs> had Will you know prior to the accident which talk about the irony of being the way that he was because the opening scene is him, you know, in bed with his girlfriend at the time and it's pouring down rain and she's just like, no, don't take the, don't take the motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And he's like, fine. So he just like rushes out into the, the street, you know, just walking. Of course he was on the phone and not looking and then gets hit by someone on a motorcycle. It's just like, but I don't uh, think he would have been able to see either way because there was that car blocking and the bicycle, like the motorcycle was going slightly fast, I think. 
Yeah. So I'm well, not sure even if he was off the phone, he would have like devil's advocate been able but he to might like, have, stop the yeah, accident. He might have not even come from that direction though. Like who knows where the actual parking garage was. But I just, mm-hmm. the whole I- irony behind the girlfriend not saying, taking the bike. take the motorcycle and he gets hit by a motorcycle. I was just like, oh God, no. And then she... I mean, at least a sprint. Yeah, I, at least they told him to his face instead of him finding about it, like finding out about it. Like, I guess maybe he did find out about it earlier, but I don't know. It was hard to tell whether they. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's just. Yeah, Will was tough. I don't think he had too too much of a character arc. He did change a lot, though. You saw him go from like really, really hating his life and just not wanting to do anything ever. And then because he started following, falling for Louisa, he started being willing to help and to be present more. There was that quote when he said, you're pretty much the only thing that makes me want to get up in the morning which Mm -hmm. it was very romantic and sweet. And on the other side of it, it's just like, God, to tie your happiness or your willingness to wake up in the morning to somebody else, that puts a lot of pressure on them. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good reason to, for that to be like the sole reason that you can stand waking up in the morning. It's just, that's sad too, you know? Yeah. And I think he did recognize that, even though he never explicitly said that, but he knew. Well, he did say it. It wasn't fair. And she was just like, I promise, like, I can make you happy. It'll be okay. Oh, gosh. She was like, I can make you happy. And and she was trying to promise him that that would never change. And, and he was just like, you can't promise me that. You don't know, you know, how you'll be years in the future. Like, you can't make that promise. And... They were just having that real conversation back on their little beach holiday. And God, that mm-hmm. scene was so sad. Like, I was like bawling in that scene too. Yeah. No, he was very mature about everything. It wasn't a rash decision for him. He wasn't, you know, going out and being like, okay, I don't think I can deal with it after a day. Like, he was making the decision after months and years of not wanting to go on it wasn't like all of a sudden just one day he was like I don't want to do this and then he chose to end his life so I think he was being very mature about it but then also for Louisa it was just so sad because yeah she she wanted to try but he was right like who's to say you're not going to fall out of love with me or get tired of this after you know 10 years and then what then I'm right back to where I am yeah. But now even worse, because now a second love <laughs> has decided I'm not worth it. Yeah, that would be awful. So yeah, I, that was very protective of himself too. Yeah, I could definitely see the logic in that. It was still tough though. There, mm-hmm. there was a quote that he would said, live boldly, push yourself, don't settle. And I feel like that was another major theme of the whole movie was just because she never did that for herself and i love that the movie made her a stronger person in that regard but i feel like for him i wish his arc could have been like him enjoying the little moments more like she did because he didn't you saw like little flashes of it Mm -hmm. I was but about like, to say, I saw little flashes like at the concert yeah. where she was biting the back. Like you could see like his smile. He was just like getting a kick out of. Yeah. I feel like all of those little is... moments were him observing her, whether it was like her watching that French subtitle movie. Like he was just like mm-hmm. looking at the corner of her eye at how she was reacting to the movie. Like everything was like revolved around her. With his her. joy yeah. in life revolved around her, which I mean, comes back to his, his quote of, you know, you're basically the only thing I want to get up in the morning for. Yeah. Because his whole joy in life, even in the small things, was because of her. Like he was getting to live vicariously through her and her love of the small things. And the same was in reverse because Louisa was getting the love of the bigger things and going out and like enjoying herself 
because of him. Like she would have never gotten to go to that concert. She would have never gotten to go on that beach vacation thing. She would have never gotten to do some of those things if it wasn't for him pushing her to. Yeah. They were very good for each other in that regard. Yeah. Up until that wedding scene, I thought that they made really great friends. And then, mm-hmm. like, the wedding scene happened. I'm like, no, they belong together. I wanted them yeah. to be together so bad. But Yeah, you, oh you well. wanted them to end up together. You wanted that to, like, end the series happily ever after he doesn't do this, the assisted suicide. That's it. That's how the movie should have ended. Tired of this tragic Nicholas Sparks bullshit, Tara. I know. I love Nicholas Sparks, though. Like, I love the, like, getting around those, like, just tear jerkers. I love those moments where you're just like, what would I do? Would I act the same way as these characters or would I act differently? Yeah, I don't even know if I could have put up with a brace of will in the beginning. I probably would have been, like, bawling in the bathroom or something after he just, like... (laughs) told me to get out I wanted him to just like go away so bad I did like how in the movie in the letter at the very end you get to see Will and his his wanting Louisa to grow and to enjoy life more fully in that letter he he talks about that um and how he wants her to to live it yeah he just he was so opposite to Patrick Patrick was just selfish and then will all of his decisions were for her they were not selfish at all Mm -hmm. yeah everything he wanted because I think at that point he knew he wasn't going to choose to live so he wanted to leave a positive impact on her life because he loved her and he knew he was not going to choose to live so he had to make an impact somehow yeah well at least they got to kiss <laughs> the scene i think it was the like the beach maybe it was the beach of the wedding and he was just like louisa the things that i want i wish i could do to you right now i was just like oh i'm so sad <laughs> Yeah, and that was part of his reason for not wanting to continue because he's like, I can't live with you wanting to do all of these things and not be able to. There are people, though, that can do that forever. Like, take mm-hmm. care of someone in that capacity. I know one. She's, like, one of the best women I have ever known to this day. And I don't know where she gets her endless reserves of energy and her optimism and just yeah her enthusiasm for life and just taking care of others but i'm just like those people are not there's not many of those people it's just hard and this is so such a downer of a movie not reading any of the books and getting the closure from reading the series i was just like and i'm done we're doing something popcorny bubblegum rainbows and butterflies for the next one no more Tara putting in <laughs> requests here, apparently. I don't get to anymore. You're in a timeout just for a little bit. But just like I put Sandra in the timeout on the, the sad ending of her sours. Like, <laughs> I can't put any more requests in for a little while, guys. Just for a little while. But I mean, I so I did like the movie just because she was settling by just mm-hmm. being with Patrick. She had been settling for the past seven years and he knew it, everybody knew it. And I just liked her kind of getting into her own and becoming independent that way and speaking up for herself and ending things with him. So yeah, I appreciated that aspect of this of this movie, Me Before You. Well, any last words on this one? I feel like it's more hopeful than the American murder <laughs> episode. <laughs> that one i'm just like no there was yeah, nothing no, there was there was nothing positive about that one whereas we no. can say that there was character growth and yeah. louisa found herself in this one yeah so but i, no. I can live with that um, yeah there's no positive whatsoever in chris watts whereas i think will had a lot of positives he just had a shitty life yeah 
bad luck. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys enjoy the movie. Go watch it. It is a tearjerker. It's still good. I still loved it. It still pulls. I know. I'm not I'm not poo-pooing all over you about it. I'm just <laughs> there have been many tears shed. Yes, yes. <laughs> I will try and come up with a happier one next time. I don't know why I gravitate towards these ones that just make me like cry my eyes out, but I do. We could do like a poll or something, like the angel poll on Twitter and just come mm -hmm. up with some options. That would be fun. Tell us what you think we should do next. And in the meantime, I'm, I guess I'm going to start watching Angel and uh, who knows how long that'll take. Probably forever. <laughs> She's going to do <laughs> half an episode a day. <laughs> but it does have David Boreanaz in it, so. Oh, that here we go. It all. all right, that here's another 30 minutes. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna. Yeah, I, have yeah, to I could go off. on forever with Here we David go. Oh my God. You can you can keep that to Twitter, okay, Tara? Keep it to Twitter. <laughs> okay. Okay. All, All right. right. Thanks for joining us, everybody. See ya. Bye.